Hello everybody. Welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a fantastic day. And without further ado, let us jump right into it. In a recent Telegram message, Shiba Inu project lead, his name is Shai Toshi Kusama, hinted at the upcoming release of Shiba Swap 2.0 stating, Ignore anything that says otherwise. That is a very... Okay. The announcement has stirred excitement among the Shiba Inu token community uh, who are eagerly anticipating the new features and improvements in the upgraded platform. I assume that he said ignore anything that says otherwise because uh, has, has that other thing launched yet? Their layer two scaling solution, Shibarium, Shibarium, Shibororo. Uh, we kept on getting news that said it was going to launch and he kept on saying like, no, it's not going to launch. Like it's happening soon in beta. And then everyone else was like, oh my gosh, he said it's going to launch. It's like there was like a lot of confusion as to. Anyway, that's where I assume that came from. Shiba Swap is a decentralized. Oh, Shiba Swap is a decentralized exchange. Okay. That allows users to trade various cryptocurrencies, primarily focusing on Shiba Inu ecosystem tokens. They are Shiba, Leash, and Bone. Wasn't there more coins? There was a Dig coin before? There were, there were five, no? There was also a stable coin as well. The platform was initially launched in July 2021 and has since gained significant traction in the DeFi space. With its user-friendly interface and unique features like liquidity provision and staking, ShibaSwap quickly garnered a dedicated user base. Uh, a, I'm going to ask, cause, because I, I, I know uh, there are at least 20 of you out there who know this. How decentralized is ShibaSwap? Like, do you know what the metrics are? Or what are, you know, are the metrics public? That's also another one. Uh, and what constitutes actual decentralization when it comes to a decentralized exchange? I ask because uh, about seven other decentralized exchanges oh, from, from, from now uh, to about a good year ago were shut down. People found their offices and told them, hey, turn it off. And they turned it off. And with decentralized things, you shouldn't be able to do that. And I'm asking because I'm sure that there are other people who are interested in using this actual protocol, but they probably... Uh, are maybe hesitant because they don't want their money taken and or it being shut down like the other uh, decentralized exchanges, what have you. Uh, can Shai Toshi receive a letter from the SEC or the Fed that tells him that he has to shut down? These are the kind of things uh, that I am just making sure to ask. All those specific details... About Shiba Swap 2.0 have not yet been disclosed. The community expects the upgrade to bring a range of enhancements and innovations. These could be, it says, it literally says these could improve security, faster transaction speeds, and expanded token support. So the news is, is that the creator or the head of the project of Shiba Inu, uh, and, 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 and I think they're meant to be pseudonymous, so we have a name, but we don't know a face we don't like we know nothing about this person uh shai toshi kusama uh has announced that shiba inu swap 2.0 decentralized exchange is coming soon but hasn't given a date i guess it's better than not talking at all what was that project there was a cryptocurrency years ago uh who never gave any news like they never told us anything that was going to happen until like the actual day of i think the coin ended up disappearing because they didn't understand how to like uh, keep attention. So people just kind of assume that like the coin had disappeared. And then four months later, you would hear like, we got an upgrade, but there'd be like three people at the party because no one knew that the coin was even still doing anything. So, you know, it's better to uh, constantly let your uh, crypto coin followers know that your project is still building and, you know, resilient in some sort of way, as opposed to just not writing anything at all. That's the Shiba Inu news. We haven't had Shiba Inu news in a while. We had Shiba Inu news every single day before. Uh, it was always the same. It was the coin burn. It was more coins being burned. It was another update, upgrade that was happening, potentially not happening. Uh, got listed on another cryptocurrency exchange. More coins got burned. It was literally every single day. So now we're getting, look at them building out their ecosystem whenever this might end up actually taking place, if it actually does take place. News. That's the Shiba Inu news. 
And yeah, let's move on. In I'm I don't understand how this was incredibly incredibly popular. According to a recent statement, Roblox, that is R O B L O X, one of the most popular online gaming platforms has released a new category of wearable virtual items that may be sold in limited numbers by independent developers. It is issued and traded like a normal NFT and even has the same appearance. I don't know that NFTs had appearances. Roblox players are free to choose their own prices for the limiteds. I guess it's called a limited. Okay. They purchase with the designer receiving 10% of the proceeds. They free to choose their own prices. 50 cents? Can I have this for a penny? Is there a limit? Moreover, it sounds suspiciously, suspiciously similar to how NFTs operate. These limited edition digital assets could transfer hands in the future while still providing financial support. Oh, they're, they're basically NFTs. They're probably just NFTs, just not on a blockchain. It's easy to simply like create a computer program that says like, hey, you sold this. Someone else has hold of it. If they sell it, you get a portion of it. That's just, you know, even if royalty enforcement has weakened over the last several months, such is the promise of NFTs. Roblox Limiteds. Yeah, that's, that's what, it seems to be, uh, what they're called, are fundamentally different from NFTs and not only because Web3 isn't involved, they also can't leave Roblox and this is a very big deal. Uh, one will not find any Roblox limiteds on the blockchain. Instead, they are subject to the same rules, okay, as everything else in Roblox's huge gaming ecosystem. Users may only use Roblox-issued virtual assets when actively participating in a Roblox game. Um, this was one of the most popular news stories that we've had in a while. It was literally everywhere. Roblox adds rare resellable digital items, but they're not NFTs. I, I, it, it, it's kind of like, um, I was going to say years ago, but this still happens now. Uh, we sometimes will get news and it's like, Hey, this company is issuing a digital asset or this company is making their stock digital in the, in the digital securities. And then at the end of the article, they're like, but guess what? It's not on a blockchain. And it's like, so what was the, what was the point of the, of the news then? It, it's the same exact thing when you hear about that a country is creating their own um, stable coin, central bank digital currency. It has nothing to do with us, but that's always hugely popular news in the cryptocurrency space that they're doing and or mimicking something similar to a cryptocurrency. So I think we had news last year that Roblox was actually trying to create NFTs. I think there was a huge amount of backlash as there normally is anytime the letters NFT are in anything or anything crypto. It, it was even worse years ago for those of you who weren't here. It was absolutely egregious. Anytime you said the word Bitcoin or Ethereum or a company announced that they were going to be uh, supporting Bitcoin or using Bitcoin or adding Ethereum as a payment method, everyone kept on talking and it was nonsense. Everyone kept on talking about how much CO2 they produce and how much this they did and how bad they were for the uh, for the world, for the community, for the air. And I was always like, cars, trucks, airplanes, cruise ships, companies dumping in water, you know, you, you, you name it. Like, why is no one paying attention to the other 99% of things that are terrible for the planet except for this one thing that has only been around for a couple of years? So, you know, just, uh, what's the word? Um... I don't know. People are paying attention to the wrong things. That's the Roblox has created something that sounds like an NFT. It's not an NFT uh, news. I don't. I, I don't know. Very, very popular. Sure. I, what is this? What What are these? I I think I'm just too old to understand anymore. I don't know what's happening. There's like a a, a Goku wearing a suit trying to come out of a portal. Is a it, that that photo is too much for me? Okay. Let's move on. Also in the news, Kathy Wood, founder, CIO, CEO, ABC123 at ARK Investment Management, LLC, also known as ARK or ARK Invest, that's a long sentence, predicts a seismic shift 
In the financial landscape as Bitcoin and Ethereum emerge as the new safe havens. Kathy Wood, you should... I don't think I need to introduce this woman. She is like the woman version of... Um, what's this guy's name? Jack Dorsey. I mean, you, you, it's nearly impossible to find someone more bullish than her. Like, Bitcoin could go down to $4 and she's, you know, she's still there. She's talking about how it's going to take over the world. We just need a couple more years before it actually uh, gets back up there in price. Uh, during episode 42 of ARK Invest in the Know podcast, Wood discussed the evolving role of Bitcoin and Ethereum in the global financial landscape. She highlighted how cryptocurrencies, previously considered volatile, are now being viewed as safe havens disrupting traditional financial systems. This was one of the main, uh, the word's not caveat, this is one of the main criticisms. I know it, Started with a C, uh, that people had years ago when it came to cryptocurrencies, that Bitcoin could never uh, be an actual everyday used currency because it's far too volatile. And even more so, that's also a lie. These are the people who are just trying to get you to not use it. Uh, all currencies start out incredibly volatile until you have enough people actually using them. And they're in the hands of enough people who are moving them back and forth. And this creates actual stability. I know it sounds crazy as there are more people actually holding it and using it. But if we ever get to a half a million dollar Bitcoin, it means that there is such a large amount of people who are actually holding on to Bitcoin and using it as an actual currency that the price will move by two, three, four percent at any given time, but it will not be moving by 14, 15, 25 percent swings over the course of a day. When you get to a multi-million dollar Bitcoin, the price will move similar. If, if you've never looked at, and, and, and I think it's nonsensical to even uh, deem uh, cryptocurrencies to be volatile when we're talking about countries that have like a, a 10 percent inflation over the course of a seven month period, not even an entire year. You will see that these currencies traded against each other are still relatively volatile comparative to each other. But that's also because a huge amount of people are holding these coins. I mean, these dollars or whatever. Anyway. The point is, that's what the idea is. As time goes on, these will get more uh, stable and secure in, in volume. But I'm just going to throw this in here. I think a large portion of what we're seeing when it comes to cryptocurrency volatility right now, uh, especially as they aren't as volatile as you might have remembered a number of years ago. Once again, Ethereum's not falling by 18% or rising by 28% over the course of a day. Neither is Bitcoin. Many of the other stable coins or the other cryptocurrencies might be doing so simply because they don't have as much volume uh, or liquidity as the top two coins. Uh, but as time goes on, this will once again flatten itself out. And what we're currently seeing right now appears to be I don't want to use the word manipulation, but I think there's I, I think that and believe based on the news that we have been receiving for the last seven years that there's so many rich people who are in the market right now. They basically uh, know what kind of movements and are kind of controlling the movements because they basically own the majority of the coins because they've been the only buyers over the course of the last couple of years. If you own it, you kind of control it. That kind of, you know, I, I, I think you get what I'm saying. What was that chart that we saw? The, the Wyckoff chart, if, for those of you who haven't looked into that video, I think it's called W-Y, is it C-K-O-F-F? -F? I think that's it. Uh, no, W-Y-C-O-F-F, -F. I don't remember, you'll, you, you, you'll find it. Uh, where basically this guy figured out like two or three years ago that there's a chart that's used in traditional finance to let uh, smaller players know that the market is in the hands of uh, billionaires and we saw that exact same, like the exact same movements in the chart play out in Bitcoin's price. So it's kind of like a really weird calling card uh, that the billionaires are here and that they're accumulating, if you will. Kathy Wood emphasized that the perception of Bitcoin and Ethereum as flight to safety assets, similar to gold, signifies broader adoption and acceptance than initially anticipated. This development, she suggested, could be the tip of the iceberg for the transformative impact of cryptocurrencies on the world economy. And there's her sitting on a chair right there. In a conversation with Dr. Art Laffer, okay, who is her mentor and former professor, would explain that Bitcoin is currently fulfilling the role of a store of value. Uh, well, nope, I would go that far. I, I, I think we're there or could be there one day. I don't know if we're quite there. 
She uh, stated that if confidence in traditional global monetary systems were to decline, people might increasingly turn to cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin. Well, well that's also that's not even a real, a real question anymore. That was kind of proven in 2020. Um, as we saw tons of people looking for other options. And I mean, it's very dystopian in manner as far as uh, the world's economy was completely collapsing. Everyone was uh, inside of their abodes um, and therefore were looking for other ways to simply make money. And cryptocurrency was like at the top of the list as something that was relatively volatile, that had tons of people moving inside of its market at all times, and where there was a, a way for them to actually end up uh, making money. So yeah, you know, that's kind of basically been proven. If we see, if we see uh, inflation continuing to rise, global systems collapsing, and things just not really working out that well for people around the world, people will continue to move into Bitcoin and Ether, what have you, uh, over the course of the next couple of years, if not into infinity as the idea goes. So the news is, uh, Kathy Wood once again is bullisherer than she was before. It's Kathy Wood, Mike, no, I, I won't even consider Mike Novogratz as being like a bull because sometimes you see him on CNBC kind of like flapping his wings and he's like, he'll, he'll mention like, you know, be afraid, things might not be so good. And then other weeks he's talking about how amazing it is. Uh, Raul Pal. Is, is a big bull. What's the other guy? The guy from um, Michael Saylor. Michael Saylor is... Uh, I wonder how many Bitcoin Kathy Wood has comparative to Michael Saylor. Uh, because, yeah, they keep buying up all the Bitcoin and there's not a lot left. So that's the still bullish on Bitcoin news. Yeah. Let's move on. Rightio, I do hope that you have all enjoyed. I hope you all are having a great day, great morning, great afternoon, great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Um, what have you all been up to? What's new? What's going on? How's life? What's the haps? Uh, yeah, <laughs> and I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.